Okay, so I think we can we can start now. So we have um, <coughs> one student presentation by Julia Longo from um, Berlin, Humboldt University Berlin. And uh, so we did some local exercises here on Breitenberg vehicles and you will see an introduction to Breitenberg vehicles um, for about five minutes and then some, some videos of our robots. So it's a nice. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Julia Lungo and I will be introducing you to the uh, Breitenberg vehicles, which came into existence thanks to um, Valentino Breitenberg, which was an Italian neuroscientist, cyberneticist, and former director of the Max Planck Institute uh, of Biological Cybernetics in Tübingen, Germany. In uh, 1984, he wrote, a, he wrote a book entitled Vehicles, Experiments in Synthetic uh, Psychology, in which he came up with a thought experiment of how simple vehicles can exhibit complex, seemingly intelligent behavior. And by simple, I mean that they possess no brain, they have no internal, no internal memory, no representation of the environment, and they are not uh, capable of making inferences. As such, they are the simplest form of behavior-based AI and one of the earliest examples of embodied cognition. So in order for you to better understand what these vehicles actually are, I will describe the, uh, the simplest of them, vehicle number one, which uh, is composed of a sensor that collects data about the environment. It can be a light, heat, or a chemical sensor. It also has a motor which helps the vehicle interact with the environment. And this motor is connected to the sensor through either an excitatory connection, meaning that increased stimulation of the sensor will increase the activity of the motor, or an inhibitory uh, connection, meaning that the opposite, that the, uh, an increased stimulation of the sensor will decrease the activity of the motor. And a very, a very important component of this paradigm is the environment, which closes the loop between the uh, sensor and the actuator. So this was a simple example, and it doesn't do much, but things get, start uh, getting more interesting as soon as we add uh, another pair of sensor and motor. And uh, the vehicles in this illustration have two light sensors and two wheels, which are actuated by two motors. The sensors can either be connected to, um, to the wheel on the same side of the vehicle or on the opposite side of the vehicle, giving rise to two different types of behaviors. Vehicle 2A, um, that we can see on the left side, has an uncrossed excitatory connection, which means that if we shine more light at the right side of the vehicle, for example, the right wheel will turn faster, which will make the vehicle turn towards the left or away from the light. As soon as it reaches darkness, uh, it won't be excited by any light anymore, so the motor will stop, giving rise to a behavior that was uh, deemed cowardly. Vehicle 2B, on the other hand, has a crossed excitatory connection, uh, which will give rise to an aggressive behavior because it will go towards the light, light and it won't stop because the brighter the light is, the more excited the motor will be. And then if we switch the excitatory connection with an inhibitory one, we, will, uh, we can observe yet another set of, of different behaviors. So that was th the thought experiment, but, but we can also actually implement it in the physical world. And how we did in the lab was by using the Lego Mindstorms U3 kit. And I will play the videos of our results. Let's see if it actually works. No. So Nathan, can you please play the Coward movie? So you can see that it's, it's trying to avoid the light and go into the uh, darkness. The, um, the second one is the aggressor. Can you play the aggressor movie, please? So it aggressively go towards the, goes towards the light. The uh, lover. So because it has inhibitory connections, it will be drawn towards the light, but then it will stop in front of it. And then the explorer, 
which is uh, the most difficult to implement because it it goes towards the light, it stops, and then it speeds away. That's it. So uh, why are these vehicles actually interesting? Well, what I showed you is, a, is quite a simple example because it only has two light sensors, but we can, we can add more types of sensors and you have already deduced, I suppose, that more sensors will give rise to an increasingly complex behavior. And we can even explain chemotaxis, phonotaxis, or um, other behaviors observed in animals using this concept. And for those of you who don't know, chemotaxis is the orientation, the movement of an organism in response to chemicals such as uh, bacteria, the way bacteria work in response to chemicals, for example. Phonotax is in response to a sound and phototax is in response to light. And advanced behavior uh, could possibly be built on top of these fundamental mechanisms. So to sum up, we've seen that simple sensory motor interaction embedded in the environment can give rise to complex, seemingly intelligent behavior. For this behavior, we need a physical body which can interact with the environment. And we've also seen that lower forms of intelligence, uh, for example, bacteria or insects, could be explained by a Brian Tavares uh, thought experiment. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, so if there are no, no urgent question here, we can directly move to the, the second um, lecture. Are there any questions? Well, this is Rolf uh, from uh, Osaka. So I don't have a question, but a comment. I think this is also a beautiful illustration of the frame of reference problem. So you have you know, often, especially when you didn't show that, but when you have several of these Breitenberg vehicles, they show very complex, seemingly sophisticated behavior, but the underlying mechanisms are actually very simple. So I think this is a good illustration of frame of reference, just that this is mentioned also in uh, today's lecture. And thanks very much for your presentation. Okay, no chocolate for anybody today. <laughs> frame of reference problem has been mentioned. Um, so maybe you can yes. stop the sharing and then I'll put up the... Yeah. All right, uh, thank you very much. Uh, so I'll try to be quick. We're running a bit um, after time here. Uh, I'm just gonna, um, I presented last week uh, just kind of the structure, the timing for the group projects. Today I'll just go through quickly the list of koans that we put on the website, um, just so you have, have an idea. I guess uh, for those who are not present now, this, this lecture will be recorded, so you can also look at it later. Um, so uh, I'll go through the selection of the koans. Um, as Verena said, you can, you can, it's all on the website now, so you go to the lectures tab and then click on the koans, and you'll find this page um, that describes the process, what you should go through. Um, we have a Google Sheet where you can start signing up for the different koans, and I've seen students already doing that, so that's great. Uh, the final deadline is the 30th of November, but please try to do it as soon as possible because they can fill up and we have a maximum of 10 students per quorum. Um, if you have trouble, just uh, send me a message or an email. Uh, that should be, we can fix, uh, I can sign you up manually. Um, okay, so I'll go through quickly now. Again, you should think about these koans as kind of um, just suggestions or, or uh, guidelines for things that you can explore. We're not expecting a final uh, correct answer in, for each koan. Um, uh, we just want you to try to explore some of these concepts that we heard about in class. So the first koan is uh, Swiss robots with adaptive morphology. So we've seen these uh, Swiss robots a little bit in class. So these, these very simple robots are very simple actuators, um, um, sensing just uh, two simple uh, proximity sensors that when wired together in a certain way and the morphology of the robot is in a certain way, collectively they start uh, grouping, uh, pushing these boxes into clusters. So in a sense, they're tidying up. Um, the idea behind this one would then be, what if we can have controllers on board that can adapt the, adapt the morphology of the robot, um, for example, in real time, for example, uh, changing the angles of these sensors that then would perhaps bring about other behaviors 
uh, you can uh, adapt to different box sizes, think about specializations of different robots, etc. So that's the first koan. Uh, second koan is called from passive to actuated dynamic walking. Um, we also seen some example of passive dynamic walkers in class. So these are uh, robots that uh, have a very natural gait when they walk. Uh, they typically do require a downward slope, so they walk down a slope because uh, they don't have any actuation. And they typically work on very obstacle-free surfaces. Uh, so the idea here being, can you add actuators to uh, such a, um, a walker? Uh, one example on the right could be the, the Cornell Ranger that walked 65 kilometers on one battery charge, so a very efficient gait compared to normal robots. Um, can you add sensors to the soles of the feet? Maybe there could be some reflexes to let it adapt to things in the environment. And you could start with a, a, a um, WebBots example that we used in 2012 that you can download and play around with. Uh, again, you should um, already, um, if you haven't done already, download a version of uh, WebBots um, and get, uh, start playing around with it. If you're interested in using it, you will then have an extended license for the rest of the semester, probably into 2015 as well. Um, the third koan uh, is uh, take puppy out for a walk. We've seen the puppy um, robot in class. So this is this little uh, robot that has a simple, very simple actuation, just one motor per leg and then it has passive compliance through springs uh, and has this very nice natural gait as well. Um, the idea here being that you take this robot in simulation, uh, we, again we have an example that you can use, you put it into more uneven terrain uh, and see what happens. Um, so you can pl explore performance, you can investigate improvements, maybe you can put some reflexes in there, sensors in the feet, etc. So again, these are again just guidelines. If there's anything else you want to do with Puppy in an uneven terrain, feel free to do it. Um, the fourth one is Breitenberg vehicles. We had a very nice student presentation about these vehicles today. Um, the idea being here to um, develop a layered controller architecture uh, where one example could be the simple obstacle avoidance, another layer could be some kind of attraction repulsion, um, or maybe you can explore this type of vehicles for another um, uh, scenarios, for, for example, underwater applications. Um, again, there are examples for, for uh, web bots that you can use. Uh, five is called a soft touch. So this is to uh, an idea where you explore designs of different hands uh, with different degrees of passive compliance. Uh, you could, for example, have some rigid links connected by springs. Uh, you can implement it in web bots uh, or, for example, VoxCAD is another interesting simulation environment you should have a look at. Maybe if you have a low-cost 3D printer available at your university or within the group, uh, you could try a physical 3D print to get all the physical interaction um, uh, taken into account. Um, and then you can have, have a look at what happens if, how can you grasp objects simply by letting the hand fall on top of an object? Uh, what happens if you have one or more actuators? And how does this impact the amount of computation you need to do in a controller or a motion planner for such a such hand? And I think there's a great opportunity here because um, you see to the right here the iHi hand by iRobot, Harvard, and Yale. Um, we have a soft robotics toolkit you can check out, and also a soft robotics design competition. That's um, basically if you find a good idea um, during the Shanghai lectures and you will present in January, then in the beginning of February, uh, it will be the deadline for presenting a team to this design competition. So you could potentially uh, um, continue your project through this design competition, which will finish in summer, and, and you, can, you can win prizes, uh, etc. So quite interesting. Uh, Quant 6, evolution of brain and body. So we know that in, in humans and animals, the brain has, uh, and the body has evolved together, not, not just separately. Uh, so the idea here is basically to do the same in simulation. We've seen examples of this in class, for example, the work, work of, of Bongard. Um, and you can use web bots uh, or perhaps better Ludo bots here. Uh, check it out. Uh, it's a very interesting environment. Um, and you can uh, discuss things like what benefits uh, could you find for evolving mind and body concurrently and how can you play a role in future robot designs. If you... Um, Let's, uh, if you're now interested in, in, you can also take these koans and maybe go more in a theoretical con uh, direction if you want to. So we try to include a little bit of implementation in, in, in virtual or physical 
um, uh, bodies uh, for all the koans. But if you want to go more theoretical, you can also do that. So feel free to, 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 to do that uh, if you can agree with your group. Um, Quant 7, evolution of locomotion gate in modular robots. So you can basically take, for example, a Yalmor modular robot uh, that's available in Webots. Uh, you can interconnect the different modules, come up with interesting morphologies, add, for example, a very simple sinusoidal oscillator to control each of them, and then use genetic algorithms, for example, to, um, to optimize the controller uh, for different locomotion gates, see what you can come up with. Again, there's examples available. Um, Quan 8, um, this is kind of related to the first guest lecture we have. So this is useful robot collaboration from local rules. Um, the idea being to implement a swarm of robots. You could choose whatever type of robot you want. Um, so the, the, the bi one biological example might be a flock of birds. You can see the lower right corner. And can you achieve a useful task with such a swarm and using simply local rules? So no uh, enforced top-down coordination of all the robots, but, but uh, simply having each robot observe what the robots are doing uh, or maybe some short distance communications, etc. cetera. Um, Quant 9, um, this is basically about replicating the iBot experiment. I think we've covered it briefly in class, which basically is about how in some flies and some insects, there's a, a, a um, higher density of eye facets in these compound eyes towards the front, and this helps them uh, compensate for this effect of motion parallax. Uh, which means it's a kind of a cheap design so that the, the, the brain has to do less work, to, for example, to be able to follow along a wall. Um, and then there was this experiment where they replicated this and evolved the same type of structure in a robot called the iBot. The idea being here, can you do the same thing and replicate it on a simulated robot of your choice in, in, in for example, robots? And can you find, um, think about what the potential for evolving such a sensor morphology for robots in different real-world applic applications. I put a link to the, the paper on the bottom uh, for the original experiment. Uh, Quant 10, um, so this is an interesting one. Um, I guess you know that we, there, there was a, um, we had the first um, lander, uh, the Philae lander, was able to land for the first time on a comet a uh, short time ago. Um, but it bounced and ended up in a, a, a part where there was a lot, not much sunlight, so the batteries ran out. Um, and it, so this is hard to, it, it's basically not so easy to move it. Uh, the idea here being that could you think of a passive walker or hopper able to, to hop around such, such a um, comet or in such an environment? Uh, and you can draw inspiration from this uh, paper uh, with uh, the, the hopper that you see in the picture here. Uh, and then Koan 11 is simply um, define your own Koan. So do you have an idea that you haven't, um, that we haven't mentioned here? Is there something you've seen in class that you really would like to try to implement, uh, play around with? Well, if you, uh, have, you think it's a good idea, then probably other students as well. So why don't you propose it? Just send us an email. Um, the two main conditions have to be that it has to be related to the topics covered in class and that the group has to be open to all students from all sites with a maximum of five students in the group. And that's, um, that's it uh, for the koans. Uh, again, uh, please go to the koans website and try to register uh, for a koan as soon as possible so you can be sure that you get your favorite koan. Um, and yeah, I'm well, looking forward to, to working with you with the, uh, different uh, teaching assistants and, and I think we should have some interesting projects. All right, that's, that's all from me. Is there any, any questions from the site? I don't know how many is left. Any questions? Okay, if there are any questions about the, the Koans or the group projects, feel free to contact us. Uh, you can find the details on the Quans website. Okay, okay. thank you, Martin, uh, for the Quan presentation. Um, I think we are finished for today. So, everybody, have a nice day and see you next week.